This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Fast Break Podcast. I am Sean Anderson. Alongside me is Ricky Wimmer. Hey, guys. And Dave Oster. How's it going? And now I think it's just getting old now if we make a joke about Dave showing up. Because, I mean, Dave's been here for, what, That's this is like uh, two might months as well now. Just, might as well just call it, like, Cal I, Ripken. I yeah. haven't, I haven't been keeping track. Think, back on schedule. I think we need to buy him, like, a Cal Ripken jersey. I now. think he's on, him and Bill Russell are now on the uh, same level. Nice. I think you're on the same nice. level. Nice. I think we're at six. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna get into it because we you know we got it. We got a lot on deck. We got to talk about the 76ers possibly trading Nerlens Noel. Possibly no, they're going to. No, it's just they're possibly going to. It's just they're looking honest. into. They're going. To. Why? Why be honest? You don't know shit. You don't know what's in the 76ers. It's just they're looking into. You they're don't know. going to. We we can just say You're it now. Just write it in. Ricky. Write it in. He's annoying. Ricky's just annoying. Write it in. <laughs> yeah. So possibly looking into trading Nerlens Noel or Jaleel Okafor. Then we're also going to go and talk about Bismack Biombo possibly getting a max deal and whether he is deserving oh God, of one why? or not. And then we're going to wrap that up by talking: Is this LeBron's LeBron's James LeBron James's last chance to win an NBA title in Cleveland? And we'll talk about all that and more probably because we'll be calling Ricky an idiot somewhere like you guys love to do in the comments. So let's get in. Can we get some two K comments for Ricky down below? Yeah. Can we get some tin foil? Uh, can we get some tin foil sent to? Uh, sent <laughs> to our address. Anyways, uh, ESPN put it on an article in Mark Stein reporting that the Sixers are to explore trades involving Jaleel Okafor and Nerlens Noel before or in the build up to the NBA draft on June 23rd. First off, are you surprised that Jaleel Okafor is in trade talks? Uh, I mean, Nerlens doesn't really surprise me, but are you surprised that you know a ja, a ja is in trade talks, especially with you know he, him just being drafted by the Sixers? No, and the reason why is. Do I see both of these guys being traded? Eh, maybe. But really the thing is they're throwing both out there just to say, okay, whichever, we just got to get rid of one of these guys. Because let's be honest, the Sixers, unless they pull a complete 180, it looks like they're going to go with Ben Simmons. They like Ben Simmons. They've talked about Ben Simmons since the lottery. The Sixers are going to take Ben Simmons with the first overall pick. And really it just puts, okay, we got two guys that we can play at the five next to Simmons. Who's going? One of these guys Not goes just two guys. Mind. Because you have to remember, this is a team that has stashed players yeah, but year who's after gonna, year. Who's going to start next to him, let's say? Joel Embiid. You, you really think Embiid? So, okay, Without playing a single game, like I'm just going Embiid. I'm, I'm buying in the hype train because, okay, first off, you gotta love those off-season workout videos where he just looks like a goddamn beast. Then so why not take Thon Maker with the uh, twenty why, whatever pick they've got? Why do they need him? They've got Joel no, Embiid. Throw Embiid into the trade and just get Ben Simmons and Thon Maker at that point, Dave. Your brain, I am, I am your jo- brain functions in ways joking. that I can't even imagine. I am joking, by the way. So before someone started typing, that was sarcasm and not serialness. 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 Well, I'm a straight super Captain ser- Crunch. Dude, I'm bitch. super serial right now. You're an idiot. Um, <laughs> they also have coming from overseas Dario. Don't forget about him. What is he for sure going to come over this year though? It's not a hundred percent. But look, but but Ricky, Ricky, you know it, it's it's as sure as they're trading Nerlens Noel and Ja. Like it's no, in the I same think this is, same boat. This is a more sure thing because I another, think they're equally sure. Another thing you have to up. throw into is another reason why they could be exploring these trades is to go on a complete 180 kind of mindset of trust in the process. This uh, are is you complete, sure this wasn't the process? This is a complete opposite of the process. No, the hinky process the was The hinky sta- process was stash sta- players and then trade them out for talent, which is exactly what they're doing. Now, I thought the process was let these guys develop and then be a part of the team. But we won't know because Sam Hinky is well, there yeah, anymore. Well, yeah, he's gone. This is to me the my 180 point, My point of view was process. why would you draft five centers in a row if you weren't going to trade them? Unless it's like Saric. All right, all right. Saric is a power, <laughs> power forward, forward. But, but let's let, let's talk more of who would you who would you trade more, Noel or Okafor? Okafor, because he's younger. Look, ja more ha- value, but more value. I, it's more value. But are you, are you? I mean, would you give up a player who is looking like a phenomenal player? He's an in the elite post? scorer in the NBA. Yeah, in at post, least in the post. Yeah. yeah, he's growing his game. He can right now. His weakness is defense. We all know it. But look, that's something that can be taught. That can be grown. It's just the fact that right now, after one year in the league, he comes in and just becomes his offensive machine. He's still pulling down boards like crazy, so don't give him like shit for that. I think he absolutely can grow into a beast in the paint. Nerlens is kind of like, I don't know how to take him like 100% because 
He is, while he's a big, he's still kind of thin, but he's athletic enough to get in your face on defense. He can still put up some points on offense, but he's like a 10 and 10 guy. That's where I see him landing out as. Yeah, but here's he, the thing. Because of what you just said, I think of if I'm putting myself in the shoe of a GM, why would I want that guy? I'll take the guy then that you first described well, because as he the has, offensive power. Because he has more value. Because you, it, it, it's going to take a lot of value to get a guy like yeah, Okafor. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, Noel, the teams, let's be honest, the teams that are going to trade for Okafor are not going to care about what they have to give up. Can we just I, can we no, agree I probably, on that? No, I, I don't agree with that. Like, because the, I think the teams, the, the teams are going to care. If, they're yeah, not going to be like, the, oh, yeah, we'll give you our whole te- future for one kid. Look at what happened with the Nets. We could have a Nets deal. You never know what's going okay, to happen. Okay, but those were the, aging veterans. No, yeah, I know, that was established but I'm just saying talent. you never know what's going to happen with a GM, especially when winning is on the table and winning now. I think that with me, if I was a GM, I'm going to go after the guy that – I think is going to give me the best chance to win, and I'll go with the first guy, the offensive power that I can mold defensively. Okay, but if you you also look at Noel, I mean, he's kind of just like he's kind of a, a smaller white side in the fact that he just run jumps and dunks. I mean, he's he's not gonna, yeah. he's not going to beat you from outside, but he's he's super athletic and could protect the rim just because of that. So I mean, if you look at Noel, I mean, that might not be a great guy who you could build a team around, but he might be a great addition to your team and might make your team even more deep. I mean, if you look at a team like Miami, if they actually lose Whiteside, Noel might be a cheaper option. I know, I know, I don't know if they have the actual assets to trade for him because yeah, I don't even think they have a pick in the first round. But I'm saying, you know, a team that doesn't need, you know, a, a star player, they might just take Noel because he is that athletic player who can fill in and be, uh, you know, a, a future star just because, or not a future star, but a future starter for you just because he is so young. I mean, I look at I look at Noel and I just see him as a cheaper option where you can still get good value out of him. And just because he's not going to be a superstar or an all-star, he still can be a valuable starter for you. Absolutely. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, he's already pointing up. I think last year it was uh, 11 and 8. And that's, I honestly don't know. Like his cap is probably like 12 and 10 or something like that. It's not that far off. So maybe he'll surprise me and like develop his game out more. But I just see that being his niche. Like that's where he's going to stick. And Ja, we've seen big men come in this league and grow the range, grow their defense. Like I look at early look at Boogie Noah. Cousins. I would say even Noah well, too. Noah, ugh, that man has the world's <laughs> ugliest shot. Yeah, I, I don't even want to think <laughs> about him as. And with you say Boogie, I say Noah because I think of look at how he's no, grown I, as a I would leader say, too. I would say Nerlens is closer to Noah. I mean that that's the comparison I'd be happy with. I, I think Boogie is closer or Ja is closer to Boogie because. It's that offensive proudness. He knows exactly, mm-hmm. like, back to the board. He knows exactly how to get there in the post. He can nail that down. What Boogie has over him is that ability to stretch the floor more. And I think I like your comparison, though, for Noah for Nerlens well, because they both are that high-energy guy mm-hmm. who can absolutely but get your team the, back in the game. Here's the thing between Okafor and Nerlens that I think, and, I mean, going back to the one point that I did say with the teams aren't going to care what they throw out. Obviously, if it's too outlandish, like if the Lakers are trying to trade, it's too outlandish, fuck it, we'll walk away with what we already have. However, with me, I think of, hmm, the younger player who has more development, and if it's a team that's trying to bring in a younger player to develop with their team, because the one point that I I kind of feel now is with the draft, we are changing. It is now changed. Years ago... You get a lottery pick, you bring him in, cool. This guy's bringing us to the playoffs. It's not like that anymore. You need a year or two for that guy to be acclimated in. It's no longer a, I got a lottery pick, I got a guy that can step in and bring me to the finals. Are you talking like all lottery picks from 1 to 14? I'm just saying like an overall. Like even there are... Like, the impact of the lottery yeah, players at, is less, at is that what you're saying? Look at like... Ja, didn't bring the Sixers to the finals. Because he had a shit at, team. Wait, but look at... And these are top picks. Look at the Russell pick early on. The only look at Cat. He had a fucking phenomenal team and couldn't get to the playoffs. But, he didn't have but, a phenomenal team. He had a young team. He, he had a, young a, team. a really he a phenomenal good, team a really from a good, potential wait, standpoint. A yeah. really good Timberwolves. Now team you're just trying to suck up Timberwolves could, fans who hate no, the no, shit no, out of no, you. Because no, no, do you no. even watch? I they don't weren't. Watch, they weren't a but. really good team. They, <laughs> they weren't a really good team. But they 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 have no. A lot but of that's potential. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like. Like, but when, back in the day, you get. When are we like, talking back a, in the day? I'm saying even like a LeBron. Like I know LeBron's oh, a difference, but LeBron, LeBron took like three years Mello, to get to the playoffs. 
But it was a, but we have a boom playoff right away. Cats the no, only I one. Said, I said they took three years to get to the no, playoffs. But They're not a boom playoff. After, after you drafted LeBron, Cavs fans were probably sitting there going, okay, it's going to be sooner rather than later. Same with the Timberwolves. You, it took them a year. One, it's going to take that's them That's what like, I was going to say. One out of the top picks last year. This we're, we're talking about the Lakers making the playoffs in the, in the near future no, no, just that, because of that's their you. ability. That's, that's just you. Okay, that's I, me too. Gonna people, be I, think, too. I think people agree with me too. No, there were there were some comments last week okay, that said they were still, delirious. Okay, but there's also people who do agree with us. I think the I think the Lakers do have a chance to make a, the playoffs in the next two years. I mean, just because you know they they can make it in as an eighth seed. I'm I'm not saying it's going to be like you know they're going to win they're a championship going deep, yeah, in two no. years, but they can make the playoffs in Absolutely. two years in the rough and tough West. But but like the odds. rough and tough aging West, still the, the rough and the tough Mavericks West? aren't making the playoffs next year. Okay, I mean, Memphis probably isn't. The Jazz Memphis are in, isn't. Then. The okay. Jazz are in. Okay, then. the Jazz are in, but the Jazz also the Rockets rebuilding. I mean, with their new head coach, I mean, yeah, they're going to score like 140k, okay. but they're also not going to play defense. Let's take the Mavericks <laughs> and the Rockets out and Memphis the, and Memphis. Put the Jazz and the um, Timberwolves in. And, I the would put, and we need one more team. Oh, I, no, be the I would put Memphis and in before I'm the not Lakers. even saying next year. I'm, I'm talking back. two said, years yeah, is my... You said in yeah. the next two years. We didn't say next year. Yeah, I, I don't, think, I don't think one more man's going to turn around. more than two for the Lakers, but back to the since when, 76ers. I, I would love to know since when do teams instantly get a playoff push from a new guy? It took LeBron four years. It took him 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006 was his first year in the playoffs. So it took him three whole years of not making the playoffs. Yeah, but he was a guy that came in and it's like, boom. He was a cornerstone this. from yeah. day one. You're, you're saying that. that. But you're... Ben Simmons isn't going to come in and be, boom, exactly what that was. It's going to take him a year to develop a shot. Do this. Do that. Okay, LeBron wasn't a finished product when he came in. This kid would came out of high school. We're saying that if you draft a player like Brandon Ingram or Ben Simmons, you can say that that team for sure will make the playoffs in the near future. You're, we're not saying, oh, they're going to win a title in the near future. It's going to happen like LeBron. It's not going to take him, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, they draft him, he's going to make the playoffs right away. But it's going to take him a few years to develop and get acclimated with the team and the, you know, and the whole culture. And plus a lot of it is where you land. I mean, those those top tier uh, picks are usually for the worst teams. In some cases, it's not, though. They're either via trades for those picks or whatever. I mean, look, look at our boy Darko Milicic. You know, he goes out there. Dude, he's, impact. The be- he's, he's the, the best title. player from that draft He gets class, the title. Who, who got it first? Darko. Mm-hmm. So it's it's where you land matters just as much. If Actually, I think it matters more for the impact of the team than who actually drafts you. Because, actually, I think I said the same thing, but whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, going, That's the back, point. going back to, because we're getting <laughs> off the topic of the trade, yeah. my point about the trade is if I'm a GM trying to trade for one of these two players, why would I try to trade for Nerland's? When I can say, you know what, it may be a bigger price than Nerlens, but I can get a guy who's younger and more of an offensive power, and I can develop. Not, him I think the value is definitely there for Ja. Not a, not a bigger over. price, a massive price no, difference I know, between but no, Okafor I would, and Noel. As a GM, though, I would be more willing to talk. It's kind of like if I'm going to a store and I've got like two things that are similar next to each other, but one slightly better. I'd be like. Fuck it, I'm just going to look at this. No. Move that off to the no, side. No, that's like buying Jack Daniels whiskey and buying the fucking Jewel brand of whiskey. Like, that, there's a difference between there. There's a yeah. guy who could I, be I don't an all-star. Anyone's arguing yeah, the fact exactly. that there's a guy who could I'm be gonna a starter. I'm going to take that Jewel's brand and just move it to that. Yeah, so no you're going to pay, gonna you're gonna pay 20 side. bucks more? Just going to move you're gonna it to pay, the side. You know, that, that's going to be what, like 10 bucks for you? The other one's going to be 30. It, it's like it's like this way. It's going to be a lot more to get it. It's like this. I'm going to I'm gonna relate it to something Ricky knows best, and that's barbecue sauce, because I love it. I'm going to always go for that Sweet Baby Ray's instead of that Jules brand. Just going to move that Jules brand off to the side, take my Sweet Baby Ray's and go home. Okay, but Look, right, no well, one's arguing the fact that Ja is more valuable. Thank you. I, than I, 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 I thought that, you were going to say, nobody's arguing that you love barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm also <laughs> absolutely positive no one would argue that fact either. But, and you do know your barbecue sauce. I love it. But love it. No one's arguing that Nerlens has less value than Ja. Ja's upside is fun now. It's off the charts. Like, offensive powerhouse. I mean, he has so much room to develop. Nerlens, I think we see the product product close to its finish point. So Plus, he has injury problems. He had injury problems. That's coming true. Up. That's true. Um, you know, in in his two years, he did play. Uh, let's see, seventy one, like seventy five and sixty seven games. So he didn't play the whole season either year. But it is it is just that fact that look, Ja, you're going to need a lot of effort to get him to your team. Nerlens can be had for a smaller price tag and a much more reasonable price tag, but at the same time, the impact probably won't be as much unless you're like 
oh man, if we get a center who can really just dominate defensively, that's going to put us over the top. And I'm not sure if there's that need right now because the NBA is really going, you know, guard happy, shoot from the outside happy, this run and gun style mm-hmm. offense because of Clay Thompson, because of Steph Curry. Yeah, I said it first. I just had to. However, though, <laughs> I mean, the one thing I do love about this Western Conference Finals that we're seeing is kind of the resurgence of the big man. Thank you to the Thunder and Billy Donovan for doing that. Like, Steven Adams coming in here, and I know he got kicked in the balls, Dave, and you're still a little bit upset about that. But just, like, having these big men actually have an even surge, having an impact on the game. I don't think anyone's a true big, though. But I I also don't think anyone really – also, I can't believe you're, you know – Talking up Serge Ibaka, who you trash consistently on the show, but, he's, he's proven but, me wrong. But, this, he's proven I mean, me wrong this finals. I don't think people are disagreeing that the big man doesn't have value anymore because I mean, look at Demarcus Cousins. I mean, he's the biggest trading block, or you know, the, the biggest trading piece on the trading block right yeah, now. Yeah, but really, you look when at you, Anthony Davis. I mean, when he, you go and, and Kat, tell someone Kat. the first, like, if you said, okay, you got three guys, just build your team around. Um, who's none none take of us a picked center? it. Let's just none last us, week. None of us took a center first. Took a center uh, first. Last yeah. pick for both of us. None of us. Okay, but but you did. I I mean, if you look at the players, the big that man you is would dwindling. Take, if you're, that's if what you're, I'm saying. If you're talking top five players, you're talking Russell Westbrook because of his versatility. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking I LeBron are we, James. Are we talking in a specific order? Or no, no, no. We're just talking okay. okay. Russell Westbrook because of his versatility. Yeah. LeBron James because of his versatility. Or his athleticism. You're talking about yeah. You're talking about Kevin Durant because of his versatility. You're talking probably Kawhi because of his versatility and his defensive. And then obviously Steph. So yeah. I mean, I mean, you're talking about guys who aren't you know big men or aren't small. I mean, I mean, uh, they're tweener. The only person yeah. who is small on that is Steph Curry. Other than that, Russ Westbrook, he's a point guard, but that guy's a bowling ball. I mean, that guy's a that guy's a monster. He pulls down more boards than most. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's he's a, he's a, he's a tank. I mean, yeah, and look, I like you say the versatility thing, but that's what I'm saying. There's no true big men that are like that position has been dwindling. For the past few years, and it's nice in a series to actually see a guy like Stephen Adams is the main guy I look for that to actually like mean anything in a series and well, using that length that they have. But we we should get back to the trade. I, I think I know, yeah, but my thing is more just the versatility is what's killing the big man. Just because I mean I, I think because you know the whole thing of early NBA mm-hmm. was with a big man, there was just no one who could stop him because he was so fucking yep. big. Well, you, you, also, you, you, you can't put had, a, you, you can't also put had a, Bill Lambeer, uh, as Dave likes to say, just. Plowing through the paint, the paint uh, clotheslining but, guys. But I'm talking right. Exactly. So you couldn't have little guys in. That, that that's his point. It's, My, it's the fact that if you mm-hmm. have the biggest guy out there, he's gonna get the ball and nobody can stop him. That's yeah, not I'm, the case. Anymore. And I'm not talking like you know 90s. I'm talking like you know Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain, yeah, 60, who's 70s, up 50 yeah. points. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna. T- I want to direct a question your way though. Okay. Give me. You can start with Nerlens. You can start with Okafor. Whoever your little heart desires. If you're a team, which team do you pick? is the number one team to go after whichever guy you choose. I mean, I don't see a team that actually has won the value to actually get Ja because, I mean, or or a team that would actually be willing to give up all this value for Ja. Mm-hmm. But if I'm looking, you know, just, just in general, I mean, Boston has a pick in the third pick to get a Jaleel Okafor. You have Phoenix, who has a ton of guards and might be able to, I mean, they need a big man and they have a they have a, the, the fourth pick. So, I mean, maybe they'll be able to move something for that uh, just value-wise. You look at Sacramento, I mean, maybe you do a complete blockbuster and go boogie, boogie, boogie and Ja and obviously the other pieces thrown in, but those would be the two centerpieces there. And then maybe the and this one's completely fucking out of there. But the Timberwolves, you have Levine, you have a you have a high pick, you have Rubio. I mean, there, there's pieces in play that you could throw after. I'm saying none of those are no. happening. None of none of those teams are going to get them. But I'm just saying from with, teams that have value, you know, in their possession, those are the only four teams that I see that would that that have the value to match it. I'm gonna throw three teams out there and it's kind of the same thing first off with your timberwolves thing i know you said that it's a long shot that would just be horrible like let's just floor spacing let's, let's basically oh, mortgage not, no 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 i'm not I'm saying just, they, would, they should do it no, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm saying they just have value. in general about that deal let's basically mortgage the franchise for okor when we I don't, got i don't think zach levine is mortgaging the franchise no. though but they got a good like the thing good, with the timberwolves wrong, but i think it's they're at the point where it's like they don't need huge changes they just need to tinker some things i'm not saying they let do everything it. he's no, just I saying know. they have the pieces no, i'm, just saying, I'm they not had... saying that you do i'm just commenting on that deal because okay. that's the one that yeah, came I'm, out the one that i'm I not really, even confident about it i like, so I like the king's one because i mean i don't i really i mean boogie if it works i mean i don't like any of them they could take trouble big man and in, in um, Philadelphia, let the, 
it, don't we have like a recent history of that or something? Yeah, where like, just... let's take a big who has some personality problems and put him in Philly. Hey, Colangelo's hmm. a different guy, man. Uh, as long as he doesn't go bowling, I guess. Are we yeah, saying? No, like... he's not going to go bowling. And he's not coming over from the Lakers. So uh-huh. Uh-huh. that's a big thing. I got three teams. And okay. do I think they're going to happen? Two of them, maybe. Not exactly how I say. One of them's a long shot. I'll give you the long shot first. All right. What if we saw a kind of sign and trade situation, maybe not exact, but with another team involved, white side not coming back to Miami, Miami doesn't want to lose them, sign and trade involving Philly to get either either New Orleans or Oklahoma. My thing with that, though, is why the hell would they do that? Because if they're trying to get big man out and trying to get point guards, why would they bring in a different no, big no, man? No, that's why I'm saying what if there's a third team involved where white side goes to this X team X and okay. then... Philly kind of gets stuff through that third team. That's what you. I'm saying. But what does Miami provide in that situation? I mean, Whiteside's a free agent. It would be white. Miami would be giving up Whiteside. But he's already going to be a free agent, team. isn't he? It'd be a sign and trade, Dave. That's the whole point. There's, they would sign him to trade him. That's how sign and trades work. I think my Timberwolves one was better, but anyway, no, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. Ugh. They would. We don't want to lose you for nothing. So here, we are going to sign you with this money and then trade you to X team. To work in the Sixers. Like I said, long shot, but I okay. could possibly see that as an option. Another one, the Lakers. And Jimmy Jimmy Butler, <sighs> Dave, Jimmy Butler is still the creme de la creme prize. Uh-huh. However, if they can't, let's say the Bulls walk back and say, hey, we're actually going to do something smart and not trade Jimmy. And uh-huh. just he's off the table. Uh huh. What do you do? You don't trade the fucking pick. You could. How about that? You uh, could, but what, you don't do it because you're not would, fucking idiots. What would you rather, the aren't what would you rather do? <laughs> Were you guys, not pitching? guys, 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 right, right, what go, would go, you go. rather do? Take one player in Brandon Ingram or try to trade that pick to get more picks and possibly get Okafor. Why, what, what, what's the whole point? Of, so Okafor is less valuable than the number two overall pick. That's what you're saying? Because you can get more from the, you, the Sixers for the number two. You could try pick. to trade the two and stuff. For also, him, what's but the I point would... of trading Okafor when you already have the number one overall pick? So why would you get one and two? What's the point of that? Why why not just why why not just keep Okafor? Why not just have a guy that is already developed and already in your team and has already known the system for a year? That's an argument for the 76ers. Obviously, they they want to trade him for a reason. And they wouldn't take a guy. It's not like we're trading Okafor to take a big man at two. The Sixers, if they did get the the second pick, I don't know if that would be within the deal. They could also work a three-team deal. Wouldn't that be crazy? The top three teams in the draft. (laughs) The top three teams in the draft work out a deal to where the Celtics get Ingram, the Lakers get either Okafor or New Orleans. I'm going to throw Okafor there because it'd be the better story. And then... The 76ers get more picks to possibly take uh, oh, somebody God. like a, I don't know, a Chris Dunn at number three. Get off the Laker talk. Wh- who's no, the other I'm team? saying the 76ers who's now. Who's the other team? The last yeah. one is, you, and this is one I don't want to see, but I could possibly see them. This is the route if they are going to for sure get rid of Jimmy. I can see the Bulls talking about it. Because if we lose Noah, we lose Powell, we already know from the mock drafts that everyone's thinking the Bulls are going to take a big man with that first pick. Now that this is out there, I could see Gar Pax making some stupid phone call and giving up everything for fucking Ja. I and mean, then if they magically find out a way to keep the 16, I'd kind of be happy that they would take Euless because they wouldn't need a big man because they took Ja. But I wouldn't be... It'd be a rough situation, would but you, I could see Gar Pax picking up the phone and I don't, a conversation. I don't think it'd be a lot to... I, I mean, Jimmy and Okafor, I mean, I, I think that's kind of somewhat even value. I think the I think the, Bull, I think the Bulls would get something back from that. I think I think Jimmy's more valuable than Okafor right now just because he is younger and just because, I mean, it's, it's something they need but in a shooting guard. But would you want to give up Jimmy for Ja? I could see it. With, cause, I would be... Because you got you to throw this in there. Derek's, Derek's gone at the end of the year. I say we assume people are talking gone. that they're signing to a max. No, after yeah. no, if they sign him to a max, then is that not the most Gar Pax thing to do? Fire him right on the spot. Just but saying. You know what? Little Reinsdorf won't do that because the Reinsdorf family is nothing but loyal. They are loyal. Look at Kenny Williams with the White Sox. Yep. But I mean, that's a, a possibility. The Jimmy Butler slash Okafor deal to bring hashtag bring job back home. All right, who's getting traded? Nerlens Okafor, none. 
Okafor. He's getting traded, if not before, on draft night. It's cool. Nerlens. He, he's the only one with a reasonable value. Ja, we, we've talked about this. It demands too much value. The only teams with that much to move are the Celtics and possibly... Lakers? Possibly the Lakers. But... but Ricky, that, that goes completely against what you were saying with we need to bring in, you know, age veterans and get this team rolling. We don't need these young guys. Fuck it. No, I said Jimmy's still the creme de la creme, but if Jimmy's yeah. off the table, right, you go to the said. next best thing. Said. Nerl- not going to happen. Nerlens or Nerlens. Is, Nerlens is going for a, a pick that's not lottery. Or no, he's I, going I think it'll be late card. lottery. Yeah, it, I, it's, I think it, he'll be like five through 14. No, not five. Uh, the Five's top end. Sun's at 13. The I could package. see. The sun's at 13, I could see. Or I, I could see uh, 10 to... Ten to twenty, and then uh, or or a, or a point guard already. Because the they're, they're, they're going for a point guard. Because the that's Suns a poor would... return on Nerlens, wouldn't you say? But wait, if no, the it's Suns just not that. Obviously, get... more. No, but no, like I'm the main saying, piece like, would be like when you initially drafted Nerlens, the hype around him, and then you know now to be like uh, we'll go for like a, a twelve pick and uh, something. Also, another thing that I want to throw out there: why the fuck trade him? Why why are you trading him? Because I mean, too gonna, many bigs. You're gonna get Simmons though, but also try to trade Embiid. Embiid's got the fucking major injury issues. You yeah. got Sarich coming over internationally. What if Sarich doesn't pan out? I mean, uh, he might, but he, what if he doesn't pan out? I mean, you have guys in Dave's Noel, onto something with you, Embiid thing. You, I mean, you got maximum s- possibilities. Embiid's He's got hype, maximum hype possibilities, trained. but he also might never see the floor. I mean, right. he he might be Greg Oden. I mean. Right now, he's he's basically looking like Odin. You, you got no, no, else. no. He does not look like he's forty two years old. I'm, no, I mean <laughs> career wise, I'm saying. Uh, but I mean, you look at Noel. Noel's. I mean, he's averaging around twelve and ten. I, I don't think he would do that with you know Simmons and uh, Ingram. But he, I mean, off the bench, I mean, I th- Noel would be great. I mean, defensively. And then if you look at you know, if you look at Okafor, I mean, I think he, you could find a way for him and Simmons to play together. I, I think I think trading both of them would. I, I think if anyone's going, it's Noel. That's basically yeah. what I'm saying there.